In the previous video we made provisions to nest pages, enabling pages to have a parent or a child. But we'll still need a clever way to order them. Time to set up an Ajax ordering system. Now all we need is a snappy UI to order pages by dragging them around. As it so happens I stumbled across this neat jQuery plugin that allows our client to do just that. You see, I can not only sort items, but I can nest them as well. So let's bring that in. We'll follow the link to GitHub and just have a look at the README. Well, the HTML looks easy enough to set up. We just need to create a nested ordered list with some divs inside and then just connect it to some JavaScript. Also, it has some methods with which we can send the result of our sorting to a page and store it in the database. It also has some requirements I see, namely jQuery and jQuery UI. And that looks good to me. And remember guys, this work is pizza aware. If you like it, consider offering manually a pizza. So let's download. It consists of just one file. Let's paste it into our JavaScript folder. Now we're already loading jQuery, so all that's left is jQuery UI. And that's at jQueryUI.com. Click download and take a pick. Let's see, uh, we need the core. Now we don't need any widgets and we don't need any effects either. And the only interaction we need is sortable. Okay, let's download this guy. We'll just copy the CSS folder contents and paste them in our project. And we'll do the same for the minified jQuery UI JavaScript. Okay, time to set things up. First of all, we'll need to add a new method to our page controller. Let's call it order. Now this will be where we order our pages. And then we'll need another method called order Ajax. And this is where we will post the results of the order method we just created. Now we will not fetch any pages in our order method. We'll just set a variable so we know we'll need to load the necessary JavaScript. And then we'll load a new view called admin page order. And let's create that view now. Views admin page order. This view will have a section and it will have a page heading. Then let's also add a bootstrap alert box with some explanation. And now we'll create an empty div with an ID of order result. And this is where we'll display our sortable list in a minute. And now it's time for some Ajax. On page load, we'll do a post. It will go to admin page order Ajax and it will not take any post parameters. But when it's done, it will place the results it got from order Ajax and place them inside of the order result div. Now let's make sure order Ajax returns a sortable list of pages. First, we'll fetch all pages and then we'll load a view. Not a layout, just a view. And let's create that view now. It will live in admin page and it will be called order Ajax. You know, let's just do a dump of pages so we know if it returns anything. Well, we're getting a page, but I'm not seeing any dump. Let's reload it. Okay, and now we're getting a login page as well. It seems like our session was destroyed. This is a common frustration for Coding Night sessions, but we can easily fix that. Let's just do that first before we move on. What we'll do first is extend the Coding Night session. Now we'll go to the library folder and create a my session file. It will contain a class with the same name and it will extend CI session. Now let's override the sysupdate method. Now the trick is to only update the session if this is not an Ajax request. So we can tell if we're dealing with an Ajax request by listening to the HTTP X requested with server variable. Now let's see if it's set and if it's set, and if it's not an XML HTTP request, then we know that this is not an Ajax call. And we can safely call the parent function, which will update the session. So that should fix our login bug. Well, we're still getting an error. Okay, now let's just see where that error came from. It's, uh, okay, yeah, forgot quotation marks here. You probably noticed that already. So what I'm going to do is cut this. Add quotation marks and just paste it back in. Uh, let's see if it works now. And now we're getting a dollar sign is not defined. 
and that means we're talking to jQuery while jQuery is not been loaded yet. So let's just take all the JavaScript out of the tail and paste it inside of the page's head, like so. Now let's see if that does a trick. And sure enough, we're getting our dump array here. Now it would probably be a good idea to prepare the page array for nesting. So let's add an extra method to the page model for that. I'll just call it get nested. Now first we need to fetch pages, but we need to fetch them as an array, not as an array of objects. So we'll just set a pages variable and then do a get pages with a result array call to return the query results. And then we'll define an empty array and then we'll loop through pages. Now, if a page does not have a parent ID, we'll just add it to the array and the page ID will be the key. Now, if it does have a parent ID, then we'll add it to that key, but inside of a children's array. And then we'll just return the entire nested array. So it's back to the page controller and make sure we use the get nested method to fetch the pages with. And now let's have another look at our dump. And now we see we have a home page with an ID of one and we have a contact page with an ID of three and that has a children's sub array which features the about page. And that's exactly like it is in our database. The about page has a parent ID of three. And now it's time to display those pages in a nested ordered list. Now we'll go back to the order Ajax view. Okay, we need a recursive function for that. So let's create that. We'll call it getOL and it will take an array as a parameter. Also, we'll pass in if this is a child or not and we'll default that to false. First, we'll set an empty string and then we check if the array has any items in it. Now, we'll just add to the string as we go along. Okay, first we'll need to open the ol tag. If this is not a child, then it needs to have a class of sortable. If this is a child, it just needs to be a plain ol tag. Next, we'll loop through the array for each array as item. We'll open the list tags and we'll set its ID to list, followed by underscore and then the item's ID. Now the script will use this later on. And then we'll just add a div and wrap it around the title. Now it's time to ask ourselves, do we have any children? Okay, let's check. If children is set and if it contains items, then we'll add to the string. And to do that, we'll simply call this function again. So it will run in a sort of loop for the children. And that's what we call a recursive function. Now we'll just close the lead tag and add a line ending. And we'll also close the ol tag and add a line ending. And of course we need to return the string. And now all that we need to do is echo that get ol function and pass the pages array. Now let's see how that looks. Hmm, that doesn't look very good. We probably made a mistake. Let's just go back to the page model. There's something wrong with the children here. Oh yeah, I see. We need to pass it as an extra item in the children's list. So let's save that and refresh. Now this doesn't look entirely correct either. Let's just inspect that with Firebug and we'll see the OL is not closed. So let's just go back here to the order Ajax field. We'll close the OL tag and this closing looks all right. Let's just go back and refresh and that looks better. Let's just check it with Firebug. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now we've got an order page and it does a post to the order Ajax page to receive an ordered list of pages. Now let's add order pages to the admin menu. Open up layout main view and insert that link and it will point to admin page order. Let's just reload the page and there it is. Next we'll need to make the ordered list sortable. For that we need to bring in the proper JavaScript files. Remember the sortable variable we set in the page controller? We'll use that now. Let's go back to the page head view file and include the required JavaScript files if that sortable variable is set and if it equals true. The files we include will be jQuery UI. I'll just copy and paste its name here. And we'll also need jQuery nested sortable. Okay. Oh, and while we're at it, let's also set the meta char set to UTF-8. 
So with that in place, let's go back to the GitHub page for Nested Sortable and copy the JavaScript snippet we'll need in our view file. Now open up the view file called order Ajax and let's add some JavaScript tags. Now paste in that code we copied earlier. And finally, we'll also need to set max levels to two. We do not want our client to drag pages more than two layers deep, remember? Okay guys, let's see if we can get this code to work. Yay, it's working. The final step, of course, is to save the altered order. We'll add a save button, and when it's clicked, it will do an Ajax post to the order Ajax page. There, the order will be saved, and the new order will be grabbed from the database and displayed. Okay, first, the button. Now, that will live in our order view. We'll just add a simple Twitter bootstrap button that will say save, and it will have an ID of save. Now, we'll also add a JavaScript listener for that button. When the save button is clicked, we'll get the results from the sortable list. And then we'll use the to array callback to retrieve them. Now, the to array is a method of the jQuery nested sortable plugin. You can read all about it on GitHub. I'll just store that into a variable and then we'll do an Ajax post. It will go to admin page order Ajax and we'll make sure to include a sortable post value. Now we'll add an anonymous function to that which will take the data that is returned by the Ajax call. In this case that will be an HTML snippet with the new list of pages and then it will display that data in the order result div. Okay, that returns a nice looking array. Now let's have a look. The first item has an item ID of empty string. So we'll need to filter that out somehow. The rest of the items consist of an item ID and a parent ID. Oh, and we can use the keys as the order value. Good. Okay, let's create a method to save that. We'll open up the page model and create a public function called save order. Now that will take the array we just saw as a parameter. Okay. So first we need to check if the pages array contains any records. So we'll create an if statement for that. And if that's the case, then we'll loop through the array for each pages as order page. See, we're taking the key and use it as the order value for pages. And now we'll do another check. We'll only update the page if their item ID is not an empty string. Now we need a data array to update this page with. So we'll create that with a parent ID and that will equal the past parent ID and with an order value, which is equal to order. And then we'll do an active record update. So set using the data array where the primary key equals our item ID. And then we'll end with update into the current table name, which happens to be pages. Now let's copy the method name, go back to the page controller and make sure we call the method we just created and pass in the post sortable array. Well, I think that should work. So we'll just reload the page. About is now a child of contact. Let's make it a child of the home page and save that. Uh, no, that hasn't been saved. So something's wrong. Okay, so let's just have a look. We'll dump the page variable here to see if any records are liable for updating. And then we'll just dump the last query here to see if they have indeed been updated. So let's try that again. Now let's see what's happening. We can't update because we have an empty string for parent ID and that's not a correct integer value. Okay, so let's see parent ID, that was this. So let's just go ahead and cast that as an integer so it will return either zero or an integer and let's reload the page and try and save that again and now you can see yes we do have an update here and we have an update here and we have an update here now let's make contact and main page as well so we only have one sub page called about so let's just update this and there's our about page and that's a child of home so that works now let's just make sure we remove the comments and that was it. Now, what's still bugging me about this page is that it doesn't give us any feedback whatsoever. Now, to show the user that the list has indeed been updated, we'll add a little effect. Let's go back to the order view. 
Uh, let's see, immediately after the user clicks the save button, let's just have the order result div slide up so that it's gone. Now once it's fully up, we'll run an anonymous function and we'll do the ajax post there so let's just cut and paste that in there and then we'll just slide it down again so that should be a little better let's have a look in the browser and see how that behaves we'll just reload the page now we'll save it and yeah that looks a lot better and the cherry on the cake would be to bring in some styling as well similar to the page we have here now I'm going to be very naughty and just steal it from the source code. I'll copy that and I'll just create an admin CSS file and paste that in. Now let's make sure we clean it up and remove all the stuff that we don't need. Like so. And we don't need this either. And we don't need this. And that should do. Now guys, your homework of course will be to create a different styling of your own. Okay, well, let's bring this CSS file into the page head, like so. Make sure we have the right name. And it's time for one final check in the browser. And yeah, that looks fine to me. So that's it for creating an Ajax user interface to order pages. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. And the next video will be on news articles crud. So stay tuned.